In this video, we're going to take a look at a reversing challenge from the Project Sekai CTF 2023. The challenge is called Azusawa's Gasha World, and it's been tagged with this game tag, which was interesting to me, so I wanted to check it out. There's no description here, but we can go through to this other page that was linked. So essentially, there's a character, Kohana Azusawa, and today her birthday banner has dropped, and the description is basically saying that they spent all their money trying to get the limited edition birthday card but they weren't able to do it and they ran out of money. So it looks like we need to try and get this happy birthday card. So let's go and download the game, which is linked here, and we'll go and take a look at it. So I've moved over to my Windows VM to run the game. This is Commando VM, which is like a pen test and distribution, but it's really overkill for challenges like this. Just make sure that you can run the game and probably have Cheat Engine installed is normally good for game hacking challenges. So I extracted the files and we can see that we've got a Unity game, which means we might be able to decompile this with something like DNSpy. But for now, let's just try and open up the game. We do that, it's in full screen, which is kind of annoying if you want to have Cheat Engine running alongside it. So you can do Alt and Enter in Windows and, oh, you should be able to do, did I just, there we go. All right, so you do Alt and Enter and then you can just resize the window to make it match whatever you're looking for. Let's go a bit bigger than that. Something like that's pretty good. So I'm going to open up Cheat Engine as well alongside that. Because if we have a look at the game, actually, let's make it a little bit smaller. If we have a look at the game, we'll see that we can, well, I can't read what it's actually saying here, but it looks like we can get a card for, or we can do something for 100 points, or we can do 10 times that for 10 times the amount of points. And we've got 100 at the moment. We could go and have a look through here. Again, I can't read what's actually, what the menu options are, but let's just give it a go. So we've got this one that's 100. What I wanna do is try and increase this from 100 to, well, over 1,000 so we can try and use this option as well. So I'm gonna select the game process. And then the first scan that we're gonna do is gonna be for 100, because that's the current value that we've got. We'll do our first scan and then we will hit this one, we'll click what I'm assuming is OK. And there we go, that should go down to zero. And now we're gonna say that that value has changed to zero. So it's gonna give us all the values that were originally 100 whenever we did the first scan, but have changed to zero since we did the second scan. There's quite a lot, I don't know which one of these is actually our points. So I just basically select them all and hit enter. And then just put in like a big value here. And now if we go to the option to buy 10 of these cards, we'll see that, oh, actually we've got minus, that's not good. Let me do that again. Cancel, let's do this, let's do a few less nines so we don't overflow it. And then we click that again, and now it's looking good. So now we can actually buy the cards. And it basically comes through with 10 cards of different rarities. So you can see these are all two stars, but we can keep doing this. This time we got a, no, it's still all two star. Okay, let's do it again. Ah, we got a three star this time. All right, well, I kind of just tried this a few times just to see if this would get us the flag eventually, but it doesn't. So the next thing to do is probably gonna have a look at the code. So I'm gonna minimize these windows and I'm gonna open up DNSpy. We open this up and then we can just go and open up the assembly C sharp we're looking for. So. Go to the desktop, dist, and then world data managed, and then assembly C sharp. This is where the interesting stuff is going to be. And then we can just drill down this to see what we've got. The first thing I noticed was this request classes. And if we go in here, we've got a character class, and we can see all the different properties that the character has. So it's got a name, it's got a card name, a rarity. And one of the properties is flag which is obviously interesting. We can analyze that, right click and then analyze. Let me see, can I make this a bit bigger? Cool. All right, so we right click and analyze and we can basically see where it's used. So when is it assigned and when is it read? We can see it's read by this display four star character. And we can drill down and see where is that used. And if we do that, we'll see this display splash art. I'm gonna double click it and just have a look and see what the code is showing. And here's the rarity thing. So if it's a four star rarity, it's gonna do this function. If it's three stars, it'll do this one. If it's two stars, it'll do this one. And we can have a look at those functions. Oh, I clicked that too many times. 
So here's our two star. There we go. It's basically going to do some animations. It's going to play some animations. And that's about it. Let's go back and see does that differ from the three star. And it doesn't. Looks like it's just doing some animations, although the code does look slightly different, if I'm not mistaken. But if we go to the display four star character, notice that this time we actually have a string flag is character.flag. And if that's not null, it's going to load this as an image. So it looks like we need to get this four star character. Now, initially, my thoughts here were that maybe we could just have it so that no matter what type of character it is, it always does that function. So it always tries to load the flag as an image because maybe the two star and three star characters actually have a flag, but they're just not being used by these functions. To change this, we can go and edit the method. So I'm going to right click and edit. You'll notice if we just try to even just compile it as default, it says invalid expression term. It doesn't like these parts, which we can take out and I basically, I'm just going to copy and paste what I did here. So not much has changed. We took out those angular bracket parts and then we've changed the, oh, we haven't actually changed any of those. Let me change that to four star and let me change that to four star. So no matter what the rarity is, it's always going to try and call the four star function. And then we can click compile. We can save it. And then let's try and close the game and load it again. We'll go through the same process. Actually, we don't really need to go through the same process as well. I did find a function in here somewhere where it basically checks to see if your credits are below 100 or below 1000, depending on what you're trying to do here. So you could actually just change that code as well and just remove that check and just say, well, you could say if the value is zero or above, then you're able to use these functions. But I'm just going to use Sheet Engine again, so I'll select this. You can check, by the way, if you're not too familiar with Sheet Engine, I did a series for it on the Integrity channel if you're interested in learning more about it. But anyway, let's do our first scan is for 100. And then we're going to buy one of the cards. And then our next scan is for zero. We're going to add these to the list. And then we're going to change all these to like a higher value. We'll go back, okay, and now let's try and do the 1000 option. We've got plenty of credits. Okay, and there we go, we didn't get our four star. Let's do that again. And notice that it pops up with this white blank image. So I kind of thought that what's happening here is it is actually trying to load the image where presumably the flag would be, but because the character isn't a four star character, it doesn't have the flag. and if we have a look at one of these option menus, we'll find out why that is. So it actually says that there's a 0% chance of getting the happy birthday, the four star rarity, and 8.5% chance of getting three star, and two, the two star has 91.5%. So according to this, there is 0% chance of us getting the four star. All right, let me close down the game. I'm going to undo the changes that we just made. So I'll just do Control and Z, and then we'll save it again. OK, and if we have a look through some of the functions that we have in here, I did then find one at some point. Notice we have this, by the way, that was the if the crystals are less than the cost, then return. So you could basically modify some of these functions to make it so that you don't have to always use Cheat Engine to increase your credits. But it seems to work quite well with Cheat Engine. Sometimes if you select too many values that aren't actually the health or the credits and try to change them, it'll crash the game. But it doesn't happen in this case. But anyway, we're going through the code and we see this other one, create Gasha web request. So there's a web request being made, a post request. It has this string, which you can see that it converts that from base 64. So why don't we go to decode that? You go to Cyberchef for some base 64 decoding website. We'll go from base 64. And actually this has the address that we need to connect to. So it's making a request here. We could try and open that and see what happens, but it says not found. It's obviously looking for a specific request. So let us try and make a normal request through the game while we have Wireshark open. And then we can actually see what it looks like as it's going through the network. So I'm going to go Wireshark and 
I'll keep that on full screen. Let me set the IP address to that one. Where was it? Okay, so we'll filter out all the noise here. So we'll do ip.address is equal to, and then paste that in. There's nothing because we haven't made a request yet. So in the game, let's make the request for a single card. And there we go, that comes back. And now we can see that request. So it makes a post request to Gacha. Let's follow the HTTP stream. And we'll see the request then. So it's got crystals set to 100, pulls is zero, and then the number of pulls is one. And then it comes back with the response with our card, the name, the rarity, and attribute, etc. So my kind of thought here was there's not going to be much we're going to be able to do on the client side. I did think originally maybe the four star card is it like in the resources or something and we could just print it out still but it looks like it's actually fetching the information from the server. So the flag is stored on the server and we need to retrieve it. So there's probably a few ways you could do this. We could start playing around with the code in DNSpy, maybe we could just patch this so that it sends some different values across. Personally though, I'd rather just do this in Burp Suite, so if we take a copy of this, then let us go back to our Linux system. So first of all, I just made a request to that page again, just so that we have it in Burp Suite, and then I'm going to right click and send it to the repeater, and then I'm just going to paste in exactly what we had. So we'll do that, we'll click send. And this time we get back a single character as we'd expect. So I was just thinking, let's play around with this. Let's change this to 10, click next. And we find out we don't have enough crystals. So let's increase our crystals and do next again. This time we get through 10 of the cards, but we don't have our high rarity. What if we change this to like a hundred pulls and then click send. And it says that's not allowed. It has to be one or 10. Okay, we'll leave it as 10. What about the pulls number? Can we increase this? Let's do that to 10. We do that and send. Nope, not looking good. What if we just do it to like a really high value? Send. And look at this, we got back a flag. So what can we do here? Let us go and create a new file called flag.b64. And I'm going to paste this in and then get rid of everything that's not the base64 encoded value. It is quite big, as you can see. Can't see the scroll bar here. There we go. All right, so save that. And then we can do base64-d to decoder. And then we'll send it to flag. Check the file type of flag. And it's a PNG image. So let's move it to flag.png and then display flag.png and there's our flag. You could try and use like Tesseract to extract the text here if you don't want to type it out, but I just typed out the flag and submitted it. And that is how we solve this challenge. I was trying the other game challenge from BN Fam, which I wanted to solve. It's in the pwn category, just gonna have a look to see how many solves it's got now. Okay, it's got zero solves, so I spent about an hour trying to actually set this up and the issue that I had was you get a Docker environment which you need to set up and that will set up like the server and some of the local stuff. But you then also need the game client so you have to download the game on Steam. And the problem I was having is that I can't install Steam on Parrot OS but I could run the Docker environment. So I went over to my Windows VM and I couldn't run the Docker environment but I could use Steam. So I don't know, maybe I need to use a different Linux distribution, which is not going to have the same issues with Steam. But I basically just gave up noticing that also it's got zero solves. And if nobody else has solved it, it's unlikely I'm going to solve it. So NeonCat0131, they have some pretty cool game hacking bug reports if you check out the Hacker One, So I'm sure this will be a cool challenge. Maybe once the write-up's out, I'll come and take another look at it and perhaps make a video. We'll see. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.